which makes this 12.5 kilonewtons in compression right here. And so now that we have all the internal forces due to the real loading, we go back to our table here. And again, you know, I, it's just all you got to do is fill it in here. So this right here, I'll use green is this table here is essentially telling me that I have 10 kilonewtons here and I'll put positive for tension. BC is plus 12.5 kilonewtons. CD is plus 10. DA is a zero force member and AC is minus 12.5 kilonewtons in compression and then here the lengths you know i just that's that's already given so this is two meters 1.5 meters uh, uh two meters i believe for cd and then 1.5 meters and then using some basic trig this is just 2.5 meters and now because you know just like i mentioned previously the, because ea is constant i could just straight up multiply n times n times l here and just multiply across and you can see oh you know this really calculating these forces in a b c d d a and a c were useless because this this virtual well at least it was useless it wasn't useful for this specific question of the horizontal displacement c because all the virtual forces here are zero which makes these zero uh, this would be 12.5 times 1.5, which is 18.75. Um, this is 0, 0, and 0. And this is in units of kilonewton meter right here. And this is 18.75 kilonewton meter right here. And so now if I go back and I, and I take all this, this summation right here, and I go back and I apply essentially the principle of virtual work. I think this is part four of our things. Apply. Uh, the PVW theorem or whatever it is, the method of virtual work, the unit force method here. You know, I've got this unit force that I applied. The horizontal displacement at C, and I'll put H for horizontal, is equal to the sum of N I N I L I over E I A I. And because this E I and A I were constant, this was constant, I was able to factor this out and and say that you know one over e a times the sum of n i n i l i like this and so that's what this is this summation right here is this term right there and that was that was a waste of space but here so what that means is if i go through and i have one times delta c h is equal to one over 200 kilonewton per millimeter squared that's kilonewton millimeter squared is equal to one gpa one gpa is one kilonewton millimeter per squared and then here uh the area i believe was 500 millimeters squared times this summation which is 18.75 kilonewton meters so i gotta make sure i convert units correctly oh i don't have to worry about units right here because the millimeters cancel out you see that? And then the kilonewtons cancel out. And so I can just solve for delta CH, which is 0 0.1875 millimeters. All right. So I converted that meter into millimeters in case you were wondering. So it's like one meter over 1,000 millimeters like that. Okay. So that's hopefully a non-issue. Anyway, hopefully that was useful. And be oh, one more thing. Because this was a positive result positive result that means the direction in which our virtual force was is matches the actual direction of the mo joint c motion so that means joint c actually moved 0.187 millimeters to the left all right hopefully that was fun and enjoy see ya